Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Teacher Raven and you're here at Teacher Raven Vlogs. So in this video, we will have the part 6 of the verb series. If you haven't watched the parts 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 yet, I will put the link here, the card, so that you could view them and also go back to this video so that we could proceed with the, another topic about verbs. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button and that notification bell for you to be updated on the future videos. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you have suggestions, questions, or comments, don't hesitate to put them on the comment section down below. So, let's now proceed with our discussion for today. Welcome everyone. This is Language Talk. So in our lesson for today, we will talk about the tense aspect system and the first one, just like what I promised in the video on the tense aspect system, we will talk about the simple present because just like what I told you, um, we will dig deeper with each of the aspect and each of the tenses. So we will begin with the simples and then after that, we will go to the perfects and then the progressive and then the perfect progressive and of course they will be divided into three your present past and your future so we will deal first with the simple present so um, i want to review you to this chart okay because of course this will make you understand the difference between the tense and aspect okay so if you haven't uh, watched that video on tense and aspect system, so just click this, okay, so that you could be directed to that video. Now, let's move on with the simple present, okay? So that will be is the topic or the focus of our video for this day. So usually when I teach the tenses, Okay, I use a timeline. So we have the timeline of the past, the present, and the future. So in the simple present, where exactly is the simple present in this timeline? Okay, so usually when we talk about the simple present, this is immediate factual report. Okay, and actually the simple present is the relevant tense or aspect for your subject verb agreement. Okay, so immediate factual report because in the moment of speaking, you are actually reporting what you are observing, okay, or what you observe in the moment, okay, or at the moment. And also, actions that are generally true. So factual information, okay, or constant ideas that are not changing. So actions took place in the past. Okay, continue to take place in the present and will take place in the future. So that's your simple present. So as you can see here in the illustration, you have the smileys okay, here to uh, show you actions. So for example, smiles. And then the smiles here, for example, he smiles every day. So it took place in the past continue to take place in the future in the present i should say and will take place in the future so that smiling continues so that's your simple present it is um a repeated action or a habitual action okay so another one is the action does not necessarily take place at the actual moment of speaking but can be at any point on the timeline that surrounds the present. So let's dig each part of that explanation. So the action does not necessarily take place at the actual moment of speaking. That is because the action could be in the past or will be in the future. Okay. However, in the moment of speaking, you are talking about it. You are immediately reporting it. 
Okay? So, regardless of that action being done in the past, okay? And still, you can see it in the present and you can still see it actually in the future. So, here you said, but can be at any point on the timeline that surrounds the present. So, this is your present. So, the times that actually surround the present are your past and your future. Okay? The next one is this example. He smiles every day. So, to illustrate to you this timeline, okay, so this is the sentence. So, the meaning of this sentence is, he smiles. So, he smiled in the past, as you can see here. He smiles in the present, and he will smile in the future. So, this is habitual, okay? You always do it, or the person you're observing um, does this, actually. Okay, every day. So, in understanding the simple present, we should also understand the core meanings. Okay, meaning these are the different um, meanings that you could derive from the simple present. So, let's begin with habitual actions in the present. Okay, this is the basic one because the first examples I showed you a while ago are ex also examples of your habitual actions in the present. So, Citadel walks to school every day. So, meaning the subject, okay, does the action every day. And it's, it continues. So, meaning, for example, I'm reporting this to you. Citadel walks to school every day. So, that action I observe about the subject, for example, I reported it to you, and I know that uh, walking, or Citadel walks in the past, she also walks at present, okay, and but not at the moment of speaking, meaning um, she walks uh, today, for example, and then tomorrow she will walk again. And that habitual action is reported to you by the speaker, okay? So that's why uh, you're, you are also showing uh, routinary activities when we talk about simple present, okay? Another one is your general timeless truth. So we have two here, your physical laws and customs. So let's first have your physical laws. So meaning these are constant laws of science or observable laws that are already um, observed, okay, and that are already tested to be true and factual. So we have here water freezes at zero degrees centigrade. So we have the subject, okay, and then this is the verb freezes at zero degrees. So here, freezes is in simple present because this is factual. This is a law of science. Okay, that you cannot change and it is constant. It is a general timeless truth. Okay, the next one is customs. So we have here an example, Filipinos celebrate the longest Christmas. So I want you to take note that I'm changing also your subject verb agreement so that you could observe uh, the different examples of sentences using the simple present, okay, their verbs agree to the subject. So, for example, here we have a plural subject, Filipinos. Of course, the verb should agree with it, and the verb should be in the base form or in the present form, okay? So, we have here, Filipinos celebrate the longest Christmas. This is a custom, okay? So, this is general timeless truth. Okay, it, 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 remains con it remains constant and it will not change, of course. So, that is the second one, general timeless truth for simple present. The next one, another core meaning is with be or the be verbs and other verbs to indicate status. So, example, there is a large tree on the corner. So, here we have... Uh, the is a be 
a form of be okay used in the sentence in a simple present form okay to uh, indicate status okay to show you uh, the status of the subject okay so the subject here is on the corner or it is pointed okay this sentence is a peculiar sentence because the subject is actually um, after okay so you have there is a large tree on the corner so the large tree is being described here that it is on the corner okay the next one is I know mr. Gutierrez so here as you can see I okay is actually agreeing or the, the verb um, no is agreeing with I even though no is a base form okay you can see that I is a special singular subject because I is followed by the base form of the verb okay if we are using um, action verbs okay so here we have um, I know Mr. Gutierrez, another verb, okay, that indicates status. So, no here, okay, is pertaining to um, I or the subject, okay, that uh, the subject knows someone, okay. So, that's another indication of status. Another one is the car belongs to Cristeta. So, we have the car, your subject. Okay, and then your verb belongs, okay, to someone. So belongs, as you can see here, is a verb with inflection S because you have car as a singular subject. Okay, so again, with B and other verbs to indicate status. And another one actually related to this core meaning is beginning of a status. So, for example, you are just um, starting to be in that status or in that state, okay? And then you are reporting it. So, for example, here, now I believe you. So, in the moment after that moment of realizing that you wanted to shift from not believing and then you are beginning, to believe something so meaning you are changing from that status to another status the beginning of that status should be in the simple present if you are reporting it so in this case now I believe you and beginning here is indicated by your um, adverb here now okay which indicates the time that it is present okay and then Another core meaning is in the subordinate clause of time or condition when the main clause contains a future time verb. So first, let's understand this part. When the main clause contains a future time verb. Okay, so let's take a look first at the main clause of the sentence. And then after that, we go back, okay, even though it's the first clause that we will see, we will go back to it that's the subordinate clause of time or condition so let's start first with time this example so again when the main clause contains a future time so let's look at first the main clause so usually the main clause doesn't have um, subordinating conjunctions okay so it usually starts with the immediate subject of the sentence so here, the clause without a subordinating conjunction, okay, or an, a transition word, okay, is he will do the chores. So again, let's go back to that explanation. When the main clause contains a future time verb, let's observe if he will do the chores um, has a future time verb. So we have will do. Okay, so then that's... That's already um, number one. The number two is in the subordinate clause of time, okay, here we have after he finishes his homework. So simple present is observed in the subordinate clause of time. 
So in this case, we have this subordinate clause after he finishes his homework. And your uh, verb here is finishes, okay? Agreeing to your subject, he, which is singular. That's why you have here a simple present verb, finishes, okay? The next one is your condition. This next example. Again, let's go back to when the main clause contains a future time verb. So let's look again at the main clause. She will be promoted to the next grade level. So if you can see a future time verb will be promoted then, therefore, you can see that in the subordinate clause of time or condition, in this case, it's condition um, introduced by the if, Okay, so this is an if clause, so it should have a simple present form of the verb. So if Veronica passes the examination, she will be promoted to the next grade level. So again, if you have these examples, subordinate clause of time and subordinate clause of condition, okay, just remember that the main clause should have a future time verb. And then go back to that subordinate clause, okay, for you to have the idea that it should also follow the simple present form, okay? Then, the next core meaning is expresses future. So, I don't want you to be confused here, okay? But this is a style in uh, reporting and writing, okay, when a scheduled event is involved. Okay, so take note of that. When a scheduled event is involved. So this one. Usually with a future time adverbial. So again, let's look at the sentence. So I have a meeting next Wednesday at the time. So we have when a scheduled event is involved. So usually with a future time adverbial. So in this case, we have... Okay, a scheduled event. So what's the event here? For example, we have a meeting. Okay. Usually with a future time adverbial. So the meeting has a future time adverbial or an adverb pertaining to that. Okay, so we have next Wednesday at that time. Okay, so we have this one and then at that time. So at that time is your adverbial. And also your next Wednesday. So your next Wednesday here is a future time. So therefore, next Wednesday at that time, your future time adverbial phrase will tell you that the main clause here, I have a meeting, should be in the simple present. Okay, so that's why you have have here your um, a present form for I. Okay, you have have or the base form for I okay and also for other subjects that are plural but of course since again I is a special kind of singular subject or singular pronoun okay it usually fall uh, it is usually followed by a base form um, verb or in the case of the linking verbs it's usually followed by am okay the next one is the present event. So this is event, okay? Sorry for the typographical error. So present event or action usually in sporting events or demonstration procedure. So let's first have the sporting events. So here comes the pitch, Anthony swings and misses. So here, because it is an immediate factual reporting of the action, of course, it should be in the simple present because the action is taking place or already took place okay, at the moment of speaking okay or demonstration procedures so for example here now i add three eggs to the mixture okay and then another one present speech acts so for present speech acts where the action is accomplished in the speaking of it so I will really use this example and demonstrate to you. I point the cursor here. 
So here, as you can see here, where the action is accomplished in the speaking of it. So a while ago, when I talked to you about this sentence, I already pointed the cursor because where the action is accomplished in the speaking of it. So the action of pointing is already accomplished in the speaking of this or reporting of this sentence or of, of this action that is occurring. Okay, so that's present speech acts. Okay, so again, following your simple present. And then the last one will be the conversational historical present used to refer to certain past events in narration. So usually your narration, okay, it follows the simple present form. So especially when it is a conversational historical present. So for example, we have they wave their arms as the Titanic starts sailing. So we have here your um, present, okay, simple present, okay, because here it says it's a historical event or a historical present, okay, in that time. However, you are trying, and usually this is because you have audience, you have readers, okay, and you want them to feel that moment, okay, and that feeling of that moment is felt if you are using the simple present okay, form of your verb in your sentences. And usually this is a, um, a bit tricky because um, this is in terms of writing, usually, okay, and even in speaking, when you are talk telling a story, Okay, to pertain to that present uh, moment okay, that is actually already finished but you wanted to tell it as if it is still ongoing or it's been uh, there at the moment of speaking. Okay, so again, that's your simple present. Of course, in the next days or in the next videos, we will talk about your simple past, simple future, present perfect, past perfect, future perfect. You also have your present progressive, past progressive, future progressive, your present perfect progressive, past perfect progressive, and your future perfect progressive. So that's again, that's your simple present under your tense aspect system. I hope that you like this video and you learned something. If you like this video, don't forget to click that like button, subscribe button, and that notification bell for you to be updated on the future videos. And if you have questions and suggestions or also comments, don't forget to put them on the comment section down below. Thank you everyone. Class dismissed.